The Jane Eyre Project lives on into 2016. Actually, to be completely honest, I've been sitting on this review for a long time. I had the video file, and I put off watching it for a long time, and then I finally did watch it, and then I reviewed it in November, I think, and then other stuff happened, I wasn't editing it, and then pfft, that was the end of the year, and so I had this review where I made all these references to it being the last Jane Eyre video of 2015, and um, well, obviously it's obsolete now. So I went to edit it, and I decided to just scrap the whole thing, which is fine. The only problem with it is that I need to talk about 1952 Jane Eyre all over again, and, well, I don't really remember. And when I realized that, I thought, well, I'll just go look at my notes and refresh my memory and then just go off of that. Or I could watch it again. It's less than an hour. However, I think, actually, my review should stem from the fact that I don't remember much about this version, and I only watched it two months ago. I watched a lot of Jane Eyre last year. For every single version that I watched, I can recall something distinctive about it. Something that I liked, something that I didn't like, and this one, this version is the only exception. I'm trying to remember, but the first thing that pops into my head, go figure, is how odd it was that when she first meets Rochester, you hear him coming along, you don't see the horse, and Jane is outside, and the horse just so happens to dump Rochester into these bushes that are right outside the door at Thornfield. And uh, they were so polite to each other. I mean, maybe he was a bit short with her, and his responses were maybe a little demanding, but it was a far cry more civil than some other versions. It's Jane Eyre. It's recognizable. It has the important aspects of the story, the key characters, and it follows the plot as it should. It was made by Westinghouse Studio One, the same people who did the 1949 version with Charlton Heston and Mary Sinclair. And so I think it's the same script, pretty much, and the same set. And it's adapted pretty much the same, shortened for television. I didn't love the Charlton Heston one, but I found it more memorable than this. This version starred Kevin McCarthy and... I can't even remember. Catherine Bard? Am I combined? I think it's Catherine Bard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She didn't make a huge impression on me, as you can see. Kevin McCarthy, he's always Kevin McCarthy. He's always the guy from Invasion of the Body Snatchers to me. He was not brooding or churlish or any of the things that I think Rochester should be. And Catherine Bard, she did the job. She didn't bring anything earth-shattering to the role, I don't think. I feel like I'm not doing it justice, and I'm sorry about that. But, you know, I just, I wasn't into it. There, it didn't hold my attention very well. Hmm, this isn't going well. Here, I'll go get my notes, and we'll see if there's anything, anything that I can say from here that would kind of... Ugh, I didn't even highlight anything. Oh, here's something that I liked. They kept in Blanche's speech about how there weren't any real men around anymore, and those were the kind of men that she preferred. You know, I'm looking over these notes, and it ticks a lot of the boxes plot-wise, but I just... It seems like the biggest impression was that it wasn't making an impression if you get what I'm saying. So, that's my review of the 1952 Jane Eyre. You know, if I wanted to do proper justice, I would go back and watch the thing again. But I don't feel like it. If you are really curious, go ahead and watch it for yourself. There's a link below. Um, I just... <sighs> there are other things to do.